Hi, my name is Nathan Clark. And my name is Jamie Clark. And you may know our team from... Go to NathanClarkTeam.com and get top dollar for your home. We've been one of the top real estate brokerages in Rhode Island for the past 11 years now. And it's been about 20 years we've been selling real estate, but real estate's not our only passion. If you're looking for information about the technical side of real estate, this probably is not the podcast for you. But we will be talking a little bit about real estate. But if you're interested in entrepreneurship, building businesses, marketing ideas, this is the podcast for you. All right, so I've got Brian Mulhern with us today on the show. Brian, welcome to the show. Nathan, Jamie, thank you for having me, my friends. I'm a little bit concerned because I see you entering my area now, and I don't know that I need more competition or if I need to start selling homes. Yes. So we'll see how it goes today. <laughs> so people that don't know, Brian is the host of Cat Country. And how long have you been over at Cat Country for? Full-time 10 years, which in radio is a lifetime. It is, yes. Or not, yeah. And I mean, I've been in radio coming up on 30 years, which is horrifying. 30 years of radio. Yeah. But you didn't uh, start in radio. Uh, no. I mean, I was a mass communications major in college, and I didn't even work at the college radio station. It wasn't on my radar at all. And as a matter of fact, for the first two years of college, I was undecided, completely clueless, just watching my parents waste money <laughs> on uh, my mediocre GPA. But at one point, uh, a friend of mine, and actually this is going to be a good local name, you two are a lot younger than I am, so I don't know if this is going to mean anything to you, but Art Lake, who used to do weather, oh, oh yeah. Yes, yeah, his son Andy used to come into a sandwich shop that I worked at in Smithfield, and we were huge Letterman fans. He and his buddy Paul, who worked with me, and one day he just said to me, you know what would be a really cool job? Writing for David Letterman. And this was back in the NBC days, and it was like I got hit by a lightning bolt, and I was like, that would be a cool job, because I'm kind of, believe it or not, a shy guy, an introvert, and I never wanted to be Letterman, mm. but to be a part of that process and be creative, I'd always kind of been a creative guy. I drew, I played music, I liked to make people laugh, and my brother and I, when we were teenagers, my parents got us a camcorder, and we used to just videotape sketches, and every year, friends of ours would ask for an anniversary tape, and this was pre-YouTube. That's how it went viral oh, wow. back then on VHS. <laughs> Yeah. And you had to mail the VHS. The yeah, next pretty person. much. Yeah. And uh, there's still a lot of those floating out there. And God forbid <laughs> they ever resurface because there's some pretty bra bad crap on there. <laughs> yeah. So that got you to Letterman. So how did you get into it? How did you get your foot in the door, though? Well, then it was about figuring out how to get that done. So I changed my major from undecided to mass communications. And I thought, well, maybe if I interned at a local news station, that way I could start networking that way. And I hated it. And <laughs> I decided right away, well, that's not the way to do it. So what I would do was I took a comedy writing class through something called the Learning Connection years oh, ago. Yes. I missed that. Oh, yeah. I, I missed the Learning great. Connection. Yeah. And uh, local comedian, now the Rhode Island Comedy Hall of Famer, Frank O'Donnell, was teaching a comedy writing class. And I was all of 18 at the time. And I was doing really well in it. At one point, he pulled me aside. This is going to show you how old I am. Uh, he said, you know, you've got a knack for this. And Jay Leno, who is filling in for Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show. Johnny who? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> he accepts freelance jokes if he thinks your stuff is good enough. And he'll pay you $50 for every joke wow. that he uses. Yeah. So back and that then, was good money back then. Oh, for an 18 year old. Yeah. Right. So because this was pre email and uh, there was these things called fax machines, Nathan, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, the back I in, the, I remember in the Carson era, I would have to give jokes to my dad to fax to Burbank at work. He's retired now, so he won't get in trouble for it. And uh, the funny thing is I sent like 10 jokes to Leno. And it's 1130 at night one night at my parents' house. My brother and I are still living there. And the phone rings. And my parents are in bed. And I'm like, oh, my God, because I think it's one of my stupid friends. I pick the phone up. I say, hello? And I hear, yeah, is that Brian there? And I said, yeah, this is Brian. He's like, Brian, it's Jay Leno. And I was like, what? <laughs> right? yeah. So he started telling me. He said, I got your stuff. I think it's really funny. And my brother's like, who is that? And he said, it's Jay Leno. 
Yeah. And suddenly my brother runs out of the room. I'm like, oh, that's not going to be good. <laughs> so Jay's talking to me. He said, yeah, I really like your stuff. And uh, you should think about doing stand up. And I'd like to hire you to write freelance for the Tonight Show. And I'm just like, oh, my God, at awesome. the age of 18. Right. And then I didn't the know middle, it was so young. Oh, yeah. 18. Mm -hmm. wow. And in the middle of all of this, I hear the other phone pick up from the basement. <laughs> Hi, Jay. <laughs> and Jay's like completely thrown. And it's my brother. And that kind of killed the call at that point. But Jay at least got in. I'm going to send you the contract and then we'll go from there. And then my brother comes upstairs. I'm like, dude, what in God's name? Like, Come on, man. How many chances am I going to have to talk to Jay Leno? <laughs> and the jealousy began. Oh, oh yeah. The sibling <laughs> rivalry. So was Jay just like, what, who's this other guy on the phone? Uh, he didn't even ask oh, at that yeah. point. I think he was just so freaked out. It's right. amazing that Jay still uh, does his own phone calls and stuff like that. He does. He's really cool that way, very down to earth. Our yeah. One of our agents on our team, Frank, uh, works at the Firehouse uh, Theater oh, in yeah. Newport. Right. And he does stand up. He's got his place there. Yeah. Jay gave him a call one time. And it's like Friday night, same story. Oh, he yeah. gets a call I and he goes, this. yeah, he goes, hey, uh, I want to come on uh, tonight. It's open, right? So I want to come on. And he's like, Frank's like, like yeah, no. Right. yeah. <laughs> no way. It's a real, it was really him. Oh, yeah. you know? And while that phone call is going on, my brother hops on. Hi, Jay. <laughs> it's me again. <laughs> Ruining everything for everybody. Does Jay live in uh, Rhode Island? Does he have a He state? has a place in Newport. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And you see him kind of uh, tooling around down there a lot. As a matter of fact, I think it's Antiques Roadshow. They just shot an episode recently at his uh, yeah, his residence, which is pretty good. I hope you <laughs> sold that one yeah. to him. <laughs> I mean, he, nice I, little commission. We, I watch uh, Jay's Garage all the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he was from Boston, right? Is it Boston? Uh, Andover, I believe, yeah. yeah it's Boston. Yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Massachusetts. Anything north is right. in Boston mm -hmm. here in Rhode Island. I wonder so, how many cars he has here in Rhode Island. Do you think he has? Well, I know he has all the ones in L.A., though. Which brings me to L.A., so that, that's what got you out to L.A.? No, that isn't what got me out to L.A. So then what happened next was my whole life has just been a series of accidents, some of them good, some of them not so good. So I'm working a job when I get out of college. I'm essentially a glorified administrative assistant at what was then Roger Williams College because before it was Roger Williams University, it was Roger Williams College. I was in the continuing education program, and I'm working this job that I hated and one day I'm sitting down with my manager who's showing me my 401k. And he said, you know, if you stay here till you're 65, you'll have a million dollars in this. And I'm like picturing myself jumping off of the Newport Hell Bridge. <laughs> like, I just can't <laughs> imagine having to do this for the rest of my life. And as I'm driving home, I have the rock station in town on. I'm not giving them a plug, but uh, Carolyn Fox, who used to do the morning show there when I was in high school, was on in the afternoon and she said, I'm looking for writers. I'm looking for people who are really into sports. And I thought, oh, all right, well, I'll just send her my resume, which was this big, but it had the Leno thing on it. Mm, so yeah, that's cool. she called me within a couple of days and said, is this Leno thing true? And I said, yeah, thankfully my brother was not home at the time to interrupt the call. <laughs> and Brother. she said, come on in. And I started working for her illegally uh, because I was out of college and I wasn't doing it for pay and I wasn't doing it for credit, but I just answered phones. And then she started asking me to write stuff for her. And then she started doing the same thing. If she used a bit that I wrote, she'd give me $25 per bit. She didn't have the Leno money. So, uh, <laughs> that's pretty good though. And then the other interesting thing that started happening was at a radio station, when music is playing or commercials are playing, that's when you take your calls because you record them because people can say horrible, nasty things and you want to be able to edit them out. So every mic in the studio is hot while that's going on. So I started kind of stepping up and making comments and I would get laughs. And the more that I did that, the more she started putting me on the air. And then eventually, long story short, I became her co-host. She started paying me out of pocket for that. Now in the middle of all of that, now this is where the LA thing comes. I'm watching Letterman one night because I'm such a fan and Phil Hartman is on from Saturday Night Live and he's in his last season there. And so he's talking about how what he's going to be doing when he leaves is he's getting his own primetime sketch variety show on NBC called The Phil Show. And he mentioned that he was looking for writers. So I had all of these tapes from my brother and I doing the camcorder thing. We had a public access show. I had some of the radio bits that I'd written. I send that off to SNL and two days later... While I'm working a part-time job elsewhere, 
Phil Hartman calls my house and is looking for me. And my mom and dad are there. And I, I'll never forget my dad and my mom called it like, wow, at work. And I said, what, what's going on? They said, some guy just called from SNL, a Peter. And I said, Phil Hartman? <laughs> oh, yeah. And they said, yeah, he wants to talk to you. And he wants you to call him at his office at SNL tomorrow. So now it's like a night of no sleep. I'm like, is he going to say, I love your stuff or, hey, keep plugging or whatever. So I'm up all night. I call him the next day and he said, yeah, this stuff is great. I want to have your brother and you out to Saturday Night Live to see how we do it because that's how we're going to do it on my show. And he essentially hired me on the spot. And so the next thing I know, I'm sitting there at 30 Rock where Bill Murray has been and, you know, all of these comedic heroes of mine just suddenly thrown into this Sally Field was hosting that week and it's just like celebrities all over the place Chris Farley Mike Myers Adam Sandler oh, yeah and uh yeah we're we're sitting there pitching ideas to Phil and we end up writing that show for a year and as often happens in show business it was going to get shot out in Hollywood we were within a week of going out but friends had really taken off and then NBC started looking for more shows like Friends, and they thought, is Sketch Variety going to work in prime time? So right before it was going to happen, they pulled the plug. But I became really good friends with Phil. We became yeah. really good partners, and we continued that right up until, unfortunately, his untimely death. And um, off of that, I got a lot of other work. And interestingly enough, a nice local connection, the guy who was producing the Phil show is a guy by the name of Joel Gallen, who is a URI grad. So mm -hmm. Phil introduced us and then we had that in common. And for years and years and years now, I've continued an association with Joel, who's going to be in town in about a month. So I'm going to be seeing him. And one of the interesting things that we're doing now is about seven or eight years ago, a writer from the Chicago Sun Times, Mike Thomas, wrote the authorized biography of Phil Hartman. And he contacted me because he wanted me to be involved. And I was my brother too. And when that was all done, he said, I want to get this book made into a movie. So he optioned the book to me. And so I wrote the movie and I thought, well, what better producer for this movie than Joel Gallen? Because Phil introduced us and I want as many people involved as possible who knew Phil. So Joel and I have been trying to shop this around. We had a lot of momentum going on in the spring. Then the pandemic hit. Yeah, it was about how many, about three years ago, the book? Uh, the book was, I think, 2014 that it came out. Wow. But in terms of writing the movie, I wrote the movie in 2019, like years passed mm -hmm. since then. And then, uh, yeah, we started kind of shopping it around. And Dana Carvey has read it and loves it. And um, it's tough because Phil's kids are very protective of the memory of um, both parents. Mm -hmm. And um, so it, if you, you have to, and this is another thing about Hollywood, you have to appease a lot of people and Everyone has an idea about how things should be done. So we'll see. But yeah, that's that's basically what got me out to Hollywood. Joel produces or has in the past the MTV Movie Awards, now the MTV Movie and TV Awards. So I've gone out there and written for that a few times. I, I wrote the special features with my brother uh, for the Friends DVDs. And just uh, we wrote for a comedy game show out there. Just all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's all it's, cool stuff, though. It's, yeah, it's, it's been pretty crazy. Yeah. And, you know, I at some point... I had to make the decision between TV and radio. And ultimately, you know, when you grow up in this area, there's no place for better or for worse like New England. Right. No matter where you go. And I did, I got so homesick and like the culture out there was crazy. And many celebrities were not as nice as Phil Hartman and Jay Leno. And uh, the creative control was very limited. It's a lot of non comedy people making comedy decisions, network people producers the lighting guys like hey you know what it'd be funny and i'm like i'm not telling you what filter to put on that but i love how you think that you need to tell me what's funny appreciate it man but how uh, old are you at that time you must have been in your early 20s Phil, i was 23 when he called yeah. me so yeah we we started uh at 23 and then he passed away in 98 five years later so yeah right up until i was i was 28 i had a five-year run with him wow what and, a, i'd just say a phenomenal start to a career and you know, a series of events, like to be able to have that opportunity. Like now yeah. I drive to South Providence every day after I get up at four in the morning <laughs> and do radio. <laughs> well, but you said something there. I think it's true. I mean, uh, Jamie and I, we've traveled quite a bit. Uh, we've seen a lot of the country, we've been out to Anaheim and LA many a times and all over. Uh, yeah. I'm not a big LA fan. Uh, very plastic place. It's uh, funny because my wife didn't know me when I was working with Phil or at any point when I was 
living in LA and she'd never been. So Phil got his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2014. So of course we got to go and got the VIP treatment and I got to take her out there and see all the old haunts and meet all of these people. And she said, she said, I could not picture you living here for 10 minutes. She's like, it's just so not you. And it's true. Mm. And the thing that I love about radio is I do really have creative control. They pretty much leave me alone. They trust me. I've done it long enough. Um, I've worked for a really great company and (laughs) well, there's a lot of, um, if I do something and they don't like it, I just apologize for it later and say, I won't do it again. (laughs) But I mean, outside of that, no, they, they're, they're really good about that. So it's, it's, it's a lot, it can be a lot more creatively rewarding and that's not to knock TV at all because I, I really did love that experience and, and back on it really fondly but it could get frustrating too and not to say that radio can't get frustrating i've worked at some stations believe you me but i'm in a really good situation right now i love uh i think rhode island is one of the most unique states oh uh, yeah the most unique state is uh, it's just different the people are different even the uh, landscape is yeah. very different mm-hmm. i was just yeah. gonna say that well the thing is too just everything is so close and yes. everything you need yes. is here when i was working in los angeles for a stretch i was 13 miles away from my office in Burbank and I was over near UCLA and it would take me on a good day, no matter how I went 90 minutes to get there. And I was miles away. Yeah. And I was driving by the Hollywood bowl. So if there was a show at the Hollywood bowl or if Kimmel had somebody and they were doing a rooftop performance, sometimes it would take me two and a half hours to get home after putting in like a 10, 12 hour day. And it's just, it's a grind. You nailed it right when you said it was just the traffic, like everywhere we've gone, um, it's just amazing. Like, well, this place is only a mile down the road, two miles down the road. I'll be right back, Jamie. Right. And you'd hop in the car and you'd come back two hours later. And right. you're like, what happened? It was like traffic. I, we don't understand traffic in Rhode Island like anywhere right. else in the world. Right. Well, my wife, when I was driving in LA, she thought it was like a video game. I mean, it's it just insanity. And when I returned the rental car, I said to the guy, what percentage of these cars get in accidents? Because you have so many people flying in from everywhere. And I'm just oh, so yeah. used to driving there now. He's like, Maybe 20% of people yeah. are getting into some kind of an accident. Like, oh, geez. Now, how'd you guys meet? We met. This is another interesting story. We came from neighboring towns. I grew up in Smithfield. She grew up in Gloucester. We played in a summer tennis league with the guy who was the tennis coach at the Smithfield High School and the guy who was the tennis coach. Uh, I know he was at Mount St. Charles, but I, I think also somehow he was involved in Gloucester. They were brothers. So we would have tournaments together. So when I was like 14, 15, I was playing in a league that where my future wife was playing and I was always like really shy and I had a huge crush on her, but I just never said a word to her. She goes on to work at the KFC in Smithfield where she's a ship supervisor of no kidding. my brother. <laughs> the brother. He's Mr. Like, Leno, yeah. He's I back. hope she didn't let him answer the phones. <laughs> and uh, so they became really friendly. And then I'd be in town. I was working at was then major video at the time. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah we were Rumford Pets. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yes, so uh, she would come in from time to time, and I would you know, just blush and be really embarrassed with my 80s mullet, what have you. <laughs> and uh, so we would cross paths from time to time. We knew of each other, but then we both went on to, especially like, you know, when we were in our teens, I was with somebody for a very long time. She was too. We both married those people. Then we both end up divorced at around the same time. And... Oddly enough, I was at the radio station, the one prior to where I am now, and her mom used to listen to that station. Do you remember, you guys are young, there was the show Jones and Joan for a very yes. long time. Okay, We're not that young. <laughs> well, Light, I... Was that Light Rock? Uh, it was, uh, I don't want to plug them. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I, I, no, it was, uh, it was 93.3. It was close. Oh, nice. So, um, I, I don't listen to either one. So. Okay. Yeah. I don't listen to them anymore <laughs> I'm either. I'm the one that listens. So. <laughs> to them? Uh, no. I was going to say this. She listens to over. you, Brian. All right. Yeah. Good and answer. And only yeah. It's you, the family Brian. food thing. Good <laughs> answer. <laughs> so I, I ended up replacing Jones. I worked with Joni, who's uh, a Rhode Island Radio Hall of Famer. And um, <laughs> my now mother-in-law was a huge fan of hers. So she started listening, not knowing that it was me, that it was one of the Mulherns. And one day she said to my now wife, you know, he's going through a divorce. I could really see you two together. You should really start listening. So and so she did start listening and she picked up on it. And then she just emailed me just out of the blue. And, uh, you know, nearly 15 years later, here we are. 
Wow. Did you say like subliminal things like for her since you knew she was listening <laughs> at all? Or I, I didn't know that she was divorced. I didn't really, I mean, my brother had stayed in touch with her, but that just wasn't on my radar. I was like fresh back from LA. I had gone through the divorce. Part of the reason why I came back from Los Angeles is my then wife too also said, I, I don't know if I can do this. Cause I went out first, got a job and then she came out and she freaked out. Um, and we're still very good friends and everything, but she just said, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I can do this. So part of the reason I came back, I'm like, well, I should try to save the marriage. And at that point we had just, we met really young and we had just kind of became different people. So, uh, so I'm, I'm still kind of trying to get my footing at that point. I had had this radio offer that I had turned down because everything was going so well in LA. And then I went back, I'm like, you guys still into that whole thing. So I ended up taking that job and then just as I'm getting my footing again, out of the blue, here comes this email. And like I said, it just, there are so many things that to me, you know, you try to prepare for your whole life about, you know, these moments. But when you think about it, um, just some guy randomly saying, you know, a friend of mine, wouldn't it be great to write for Letterman? Just so happening to be in the car when Carolyn Fox said, I'm looking for a radio person. If I had left work five minutes later. Where would you be? I know. I yeah. don't know where I would be. Real and even estate. that night watching, <laughs> happening to be watching Letterman when Phil was on and saying, oh, I'll, I'll send a thing. And then being on the radio at that time, yeah. these are all just kind of happy accidents. I mean, the thing with my wife is happy for me. You may want to ask her how happy she thinks it is 15 years later, but it's crazy. You know, what's great too is I used to work at KFC. I didn't know if you knew that. No, I oh, did yes, not know yes. that. A lot of great uh, local people have worked at KFC. Oh, it's yeah. Like, for the, the Rihanna, the Rihanna, yeah, yeah. Rihanna family has uh, obviously hired a lot of great talent. Great people. Great people. They just they know how to hire them and... My wife would have worked there forever if she could. She loved yeah. it there. And my brother did, too. Yeah, my cousins, family. the Christiansons, they got me the job. Erica got me the job. Oh, I know the Christiansons. Oh, yeah. So oh, Suzanne. Real, real well, Who yeah. doesn't know about Suzanne? <laughs> of course. So that was yeah. my mom. She listens and she calls from time to time. That's my mom's friend. best friend. They yeah. grew up oh, together. Nuts. And so we call them aunt and uncles because they're so close. Uh, and so that's And then your sister worked with you my at KFC. My sister worked there. Funny story about KFC. Okay. And if Sarah, she's watching, she's going to love this story. So you know the uh, colonel, it's a mm -hmm. big head. Of course. And you know he wears the bow tie. I don't yes. know, what do they call the southern bow tie? Uh, I'm not even sure, I don't know. For As 30 you can see, I'm not really that much into fashion. Oh, but you know what I'm talking about, about. so the black. Yeah, I the, know, exactly. The, 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 yeah, so about. for 36 years. See, a lot years, of those are country music. So. Yeah, yes. So for 36 <laughs> years of my sister's life, she thought that was the colonel's body. <laughs> Which is hilarious, and I this can't little, see tiny, it. And so now yeah. every time I watch, I but those are the two legs. Yeah. So that's for <laughs> You'll see next time, and you won't ever be able to watch it. She's not going to watch it. She's not going to watch it, but every time I drive by, that's all I can see now. It's, it's like, so it was, she was like 35, 36 when she came out and admitted to me how long that she thought that was the body. That's great. Yeah. And I was like, Sarah, we worked there. So, But they uh, great family. Have you asked her about so. the Burger King? How tall she thinks he is? Or <laughs> should we be moving on to Ronald McDonald? Right. Make sure everything's well, I, cool? I worked at Burger King. Oh, did you? So I'm wondering if I was working there while you were working at KFC. Yeah, well, you're a year younger than me, so yeah. you probably, yeah, the same exact time. That fast food, did you ever work any fast food? I worked at, and when I was having the conversation about uh, Letterman with Andy Lake, uh, I worked at Ricotti's Sub Shop on Ooh. Route 44. Oh. I love Ricotti's. Yes. Yeah, it my, was uh, my good stuff. Bob's song. Ricotti's, which is no longer On 44? It was across from... Now, where the uh, it's in the plaza where the D'Angelo's is now, mm -hmm. okay. it's across from like the mobile. That's where it was. So that little uh, ice cream shack that they knocked down years ago when they put the, the, the yeah, the, the dairy grid. cream, yeah, they yeah, knocked that down. Yeah, it was, it was right over there. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, I see now. I don't remember that. I remember Smithfield's changed a lot. Over if you want to yeah. know specifically what store it was in, it's where the CBD place is now, uh, <laughs> is where one? Ricotti's was, which, one? <laughs> <laughs> which I suppose that would have been good for business back then. All those hungry people going now. I wonder there. if it's the Bob's that's in Johnston now. Is it the same Ricotti's? No, that's a relative of his, though. The North Providence Mineral Spring Ave guy. Yeah, he's still at it. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, the Johnston one? Yeah, for Yeah, I think, I think they're all, somehow it, it's all within the family. Bob ended up moving to Florida, but there's one in Mineral Spring Ave uh, in North Providence that I know there's some relation there, and I think there may also be some kind of relation to the Johnston thing. But yeah, both of those are still cranking along. Yeah, my cousin who used to work at the Ricotti's. Really? David and Kenny, yeah, they worked at the Ricotti's, yeah. the one in Johnston there. Crazy. So it's, uh, it's funny, it's like Rhode Island is like... Six degrees of separation, I think, yeah. is, is, I think it's like three. Yeah, and we're totally. at everybody. Well, I mean, it's, what, 45 minutes wide mm. and about an hour and 20 minutes long. Not even. As well, you get, like, walking. 
that yeah. all the way down to Ashaway. I, I'd say if you stay here long enough, you're you know at some you, point you get to know everybody. Right. In fact, uh, like your mom knew my father. <laughs> Well, that's the crazy thing, too, because my mom was the deputy tax assessor at the town hall in Smithfield. And, she, you know, she loved your dad. And then even as she got later into her career, she started going in. And when you and I, because you and I have a relationship um, and you'll hear me talking about Nathan all the time on Cat Country and you ended up selling my childhood home for me. And I had a Jay Leno great called. experience. And that's if you would have told home. me that story, I know. The value would have went up. Oh, son of a. <laughs> But yeah, you were coming in, and when I told her, I said, "Hey, I'm doing this uh, this whole relationship thing with Nathan Clark," and she's like, "Oh my god, I love him!" And yeah, it was uh, it's it's crazy. I mean, just everybody knows everybody. So your mom knew my dad when my dad was 20 years old, 21 years old, getting into real estate. And I think sometimes too, he would come in when you were a kid, and she would see you like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> I remember. Yeah, I'd play with the cop machine. That was my job. <laughs> Put my hand in the cop machine. Oh, the uh, carbon. <clears throat> excuse me. The carbon. Filters on the fax. Yeah. Right. So you're saying fax machines. Yeah. So I remember when they, you have to have a dedicated line for fax mm -hmm. machines. You can yep. even put it on a phone line. Yeah. You know the sound that that made. Oh, right? yeah. It's, yeah. it's kind of like the dial up thing. Emails made life a lot easier. And yeah. I'm like real estate. I'm sure you've seen the radio has changed a lot over. Oh, my God. Years. To think about, I mean, when I first started in radio, which was 1993. I would read the newspaper and cut articles out, you know, to bring in, to talk about stuff. Now, I mean. Where would you cut these articles out of? <laughs> <laughs> and now to have everything available on the internet, not only every story that you would possibly need, but even if you need audio for something. And I mean, everything is on computers now too. Everything has changed so much. But is that good or bad? What do you think? It's good for the most part. It makes my job a lot easier. However, when you automate anything, what they have also learned to do is have people record radio shows so they don't have to hire as many people. And I mean, syndication is another area where that has affected people who work in the business. So technology can be both good and bad. I use social media as an example. You know, they went into that with the best of intentions. Oh mm -hmm. my God, it's going to bring us all closer together. Yeah. You're going to talk to all of these people that you haven't seen in years. And then you can just see them wanting to murder each other over politics. <laughs> you and, can't say anything. No, I know. Like I get, I get, I love the Gloucester town page. We both live in Gloucester. Oh, yeah. No, I'm on there. You, quite a bit. You're right behind me. Like, if we could walk through the woods, we could hit Brian's house, right? Right, yeah. Uh, but this is sometimes I just can't bite my tongue. Oh, uh, it's tough. And it's, it's real just, tough. Like, people are so happy. Today, I had to say something. Somebody was commenting. Oh. I like a Gene pizza, and please don't kill me for saying that. But I like a Gene pizza. I've lived, I know the number 568 27 25 forever. <laughs> since I was a little plug. kid. He doesn't even know herself. Yes. He knows the Gene's. I know that number. Mine's just and that's pretty much it. I know your house number still. You don't live there anymore. Yeah. But when you were growing up, I knew your house number. But uh, people love to complain about a gene, and so I defended a gene today. And I'm just waiting for the backlash of. Oh, you know it's coming. It's so funny too, though. I mean, even how things have changed over the decades that I've been on the radio. How sensitive people are about everything now. Mm. We have these people. I say yeah. it all the time. They dial the first six numbers and they're just waiting for me to say something that upsets them. They hit that seventh one just to tell me what they think. And and here's another area where comedy yeah. it's complicated too. Back when I first started, if you hated me, you had four hours to tell me. <laughs> you had to call, I had to pick up, and you had to tell me then. The access that everybody has to you now, and I mean, you know, not email. only email, I mean, every social media page that you have, which you have to be on all of them because the station wants that and you need it as a promotional tool. It is just, it's never ending. And I mean, it can be a good thing and a bad thing. I've become friendly with people who listen. I mean, over the years, you can't help but have something like that happen. Right. But if I do something that people don't like, and that will happen more than periodically. I hear about that too. So what does that, what does that look like? Cause I have a question on here that I'm, you know, dying to ask, uh, you must get some pretty funny people calling in or just interesting, like, yeah, there's some um, wows. They wow you. There's, um, there's a roster of regulars and for people who listen to Howard Stern, like Howard Stern has what he calls the whack pack. And it's just these people who have just been on the show so much that everybody gets really familiar with them and their quirks. And I have something similar. I, I like to think, I don't <laughs> degrade them to the level that Howard does from time to time. But I mean, I have, uh, there's this guy, Bill from Chapachi, who calls all the time, who's a real character. This guy who just... He's known as the mouse from Providence, and uh, he's he's really opinionated and very funny. We have Jules from Greenville who owns the uh, the pet shop, 
um, right by Austin Avenue in 44. Oh, yeah. okay. And yep. she's constantly calling in. I mean, I could go on and on. Mallory from Boroughville. And uh, yeah, you just, you become to know them so well that you start to develop a shorthand with them. And it gets to the point too, like Jules has told me, people have gone into her pet shop like wanting to take a photo with her or get her autograph oh, wow. because they're on so much. And uh, I just met her for the first time a couple of weeks ago. We have a mutual friend who lives over near Suzanne who was retiring from the state house. So she also did some grooming there. And so they had a party. So I finally got to meet her. And that's that's always so crazy and interesting. Well, too. are they crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think they want to see how crazy I am. Yeah. But, uh, have you ever had anything like that? You got like stalker or anything like that? I've had to call the state police. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. No, there's, I could tell you some stories. That's when you People, know you've made it. I suppose. But, <laughs> you know, when when you have a kid in the house, oh, some yeah. of that stuff gets really scary. I mean, we Oh, really? I, I receive, like, I've received mail at my house, and I know people don't mean to freak me out when they do that, but I'm like, okay, now I they know where it's going to be a separation. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. There have been times, um, you know, it can be very dark in Gloucester, and uh, a lot of us, because there's not a lot of streetlights, we have very bright lights on our driveways, and at one point, mine burned out, and then it, there was somebody who kept coming to my house and pounding on the window. Really? The, the, the window? Yeah, and people would call at all hours of the it's night. Creepy. And, uh, yeah, they're like... What'd you say? Well, <laughs> what would trigger that from someone? Let's just say, for example, there was somebody speaking of the social media thing. And I, I, I've talked a lot about depression. I've, I've had depression in my life and in my family. And when Robin Williams took his life, we, we did a lot about it. And I've gotten a lot of exposure for it. So sometimes people come to me looking for help. And I try to help them as much as I can. But sometimes I can only do so much. So when I start to tell them, look, I think we've kind of hit the area where you need to talk to a professional and then they don't want it to end. Oh. So then it gets to a point where they start getting a little unreasonable. And then if I have to block them on something, then they, <laughs> and then you try to, you try to block them on everything. And sometimes they have different usernames and they're like, I know where you live. And I'll, you know, I, if I'm making a public appearance, I can come and see you there. And then, like, Oh my God. So then you've got to, put a picture of them up at the front desk and you've got to contact the state police. Wow. And wow. yeah, it's, I'm sorry. You got to go through that stuff. It's, it's, it's crazy. You know, it's a crazy world. It, it really and truly is. And I, it, in some ways it's getting worse, but that having been said, that's a very small percentage of the population. For the most part, there's a lot more of the jewels is from Greenville, the bill from Chapachet and the mouse is from Providence. And they do, they, be, they become like, family you know i mean even, even you guys you know like we've got to know each other really well and we've become friendly and i try to focus way more on that than some of the negative right. that comes with it i was just curious because i you know there's there's always the spectrum right mm -hmm. so yeah. i was like oh i wonder what he goes through like both funny and like what you were just talking about yeah yeah no yeah. You, you you get all you get all kinds and if you do it long enough too and and the weird thing is you're coming into people's homes and cars every day. So they feel like they know you. And I get that. And I, I get that connection. But, you know, as with all of those things, it's probably the same thing with you with the billboards, my friend, and hanging out with Barbara Corcoran and whatnot. Oh, I always get, oh, you're married to the man on the billboard. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have so yep. many people stalking me. It's just it's crazy. <laughs> but as with everything, like there is, there's, there's kind of a line that, that can be yeah, no, crossed it. or become blurred. And I don't, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to seem ungrateful or freak people out about it, but it's just, it's a reality of, yeah. of what I do. You know? Working in the public. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, thinking of things changing too, um, these podcasts, like we were talking before, it's like, so Jamie and I just want to have fun, you know, right. make a podcast. And one of the reasons we do this connect is connect with our audience. Connect with the audience and yeah. people kind of see the besides, like, you know, the billboard out there with, you know, someone that looks really good in a billboard. Also, they see him in public go, like, who's the same guy? I'm like, I took that picture six weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you uh, get recognized off of the billboard? Um, I get recognized when I say my name, but not okay. my face. And I don't know why, because it really See, that photo is only six months old. This but. is another thing that gets so crazy. Because of social media and everything else, Like my wife will be out in Target, and somebody will come up to her and say, Are, really? you're Brian's wife, aren't yeah. you? And I don't mean to freak you out. And she's just like, oh, my God. But that's, that's how pervasive it is now. Yeah. Um, 
So maybe we should think about this podcast again. I don't know. So <laughs> the point of the podcast. You don't podcast, want to become too big. Yeah. Well, it was relic. just to kind of put a behind the scenes and kind of bring our friends yeah. and uh, family on the show. And we like businesses. Um, you know, that's one of my biggest things is real estate is the business that we're in. Right. Uh, but we really like the entrepreneurship of right. building a business, yeah. ideas, and just hearing people's stories. Like your story is like, let's face it. I'm just a kid from Gloucester. You're a kid from Smithfield <laughs> yeah, and Jay Leno, day, right? You know, and, and all these other and how the story just spreads. Right. And I think too, people listening to young people, you know, that have uh, dreams and aspirations of, of making things happen. It's just oh, it's, it can be done. I mean, yeah. that's the thing. It's just, just try. it just takes a lot of work. And people will ask me all the time, "How do I get into radio? How do I get into TV?" And I say, "It's getting." It's getting easier in some ways because there are so many platforms like YouTube. And if you can take off, and I mean, there's so many podcasts, but in some ways there's so many of them that it's hard to make enough noise to be noticed. But what you have to do is just work, 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 work really hard. I mean, I, I put in even now people are like, oh, you only work four hours a day. I'm like The easiest yeah. part of my day is when I'm on the radio. The oh, hardest sorry. part is going home like, what are we doing tomorrow? You know, I got to figure yeah. that out. <laughs> and that's that's just me behind a computer all day long. So you do to, your own material. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah totally. So uh, you got to have that work ethic. And I tell people who get into it, like I said, I walked in somewhere, I Worked illegally for free, but I never said no to anything. And that's how you stand out. And that's how you make a difference. And you want to be persistent, but you don't want to be persistent to the point where I have to call the state police. <laughs> and put the photo up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But no, it's, I mean, believe you me, I never would have thought in a thousand years that I would have had this life. But yeah, you know, kids from Smithfield and Gloucester, totally, you can get this done if you, if you have the drive and if you have the work ethic and you got to be nice to people. Too. Step up. That's another right. thing. Yeah. You know, I think it's biggest thing is I was, I would say step up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, is that's what a lot of people just don't want. They, they, they don't want enough to step up or step out. Right. And try to make something happen. And just showing up where they say it's 80% of the yeah. work. Yeah. Sometimes I would even say that could be like 90 to 95%. I mean, especially I, I work in a business and TV and radio where Let's face it, at the end of the day, it's people who get into it because they don't want to work hard. They want a fun job. Oh, yeah. But what they don't realize heading into it is it takes a lot of work. So you have people, I, I've had people who are way more talented than I am. But one of the things that I said too, I, I got to do this Carolyn Fox thing very early on in radio. And then she decided to retire in the middle of it. And... So I was working for her, not the radio station. So I went to the radio station. I said, can I stay on the air? They said, yeah. And I'm here I am in my mid-20s. And they said, but if you think you're taking over her slot, that's not going to happen. So what you need to do is we're going to give you a shift. This is before automation. 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. Saturday into Sunday. Nice. And while all of my friends were out getting drunk, yes. you know, just trying to <laughs> pick up women or guys, depending on who the friend was, I'm in a radio station at four in the morning. Uh, and I remember I had been doing it for about a year. One day the GM walked in, he's like, how you doing, Kevin? I'm like, this guy doesn't even know who I am. Like, what am I doing here? Wasting all this time. But it would have been very easy for me to give up. But then I got a promotion to midnight to five thirty, Sunday into Monday. And it's, it is, it's that process. Of just plugging and plugging and plugging. And a lot of times you lose these jobs and sometimes you have to take steps back to take steps forward again. Yeah. Not everybody has the wherewithal to be able to do it. It's that can be a tough part of it, but if you love it, no matter what anybody says, it's not going to stop you. Wow. You look at Colonel Sanders <laughs> with that body, with those, with those legs, legs. How? <laughs> well, everybody knows the Colonel Sanders star, right? Well, go he ahead. was like, he was like 67, 66 years old. He's 65. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, you know, it didn't have a very good family life. He, his wife left him. His, he had a daughter. You know, she took the kid and left. And he was sixty-five years old, and he had he got his check from. I think he was in the military, so he's got his his severance, not severance, but you know, his uh, right. pension, his or, pension, or yeah. whatever it was, and it was basically less money that he could barely live on now. Right. And he was going to end it, and uh, he didn't. And he started going door to door in his car and selling um, his recipe for the KFC to restaurant to restaurant. And no one wanted to buy it at first, but of course he got a couple to do it. One bought it, 
And he started cooking it for him, and boom. And that was at 60, 70 years old. Well, that's where Phil Hartman was a great example. And first, I have a lot of friends who are comedians who also ask for my advice. I've done a little stand-up. I've done some roasting, things like that. But um, <laughs> you want me to roast them? We've but, got to make another but, episode for that. <laughs> I don't want to destroy our business relationship. <laughs> but um, one of the things that I always tell the comedians is, for Rodney Dangerfield, he didn't hit until his 50s. And I always say to them, do you have the stomach for that? Because, I mean, it really is about just continuing to do it and then being in that right place. The world, the universe dictates that for you. The universe dictated when I was going to be in that car hearing Carolyn. I was going to be on that couch watching that episode of David Letterman. It's not really up to you. So do you love it enough that you're willing to put in another 15 years? And Phil Hartman didn't get SNL until I think he was like 35. And, you know, you had Eddie Murphy start when he was 19. And at that point, a lot of people would have given up. And he was working at an improv theater in Los Angeles called The Groundlings, where a lot of people had come and a lot of his friends had zoomed past him. But he loved it enough that he kept doing it. And that's how it happened for him. So it is. It's about that persistence. And I'm sure, you know, <laughs> you're not nearly as successful or you weren't nearly as successful back when you first started as you are now, but you've just kind of, you know, really stuck to it and worked really, really hard. I mean, you did have your dad to be able to show you how to do a lot of it, which is. Oh yeah. That, I mean, that's a huge uh, step up of you know, the start mm -hmm. on his shoulders and be able to go from there. But, but there's I think nothing it's, like life experience and really doing it. I think it's the Irish side of us. Um, yeah. Just, you know, you have Stubborn. to be. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> you know, how many times can you knock someone down and they keep on coming back? It's like, fine, let's just give this person a job. <laughs> Let me go away. It's the low self-esteem. It's the Irish Catholic guilt for me. Uh, I definitely hear that little yeah. clear. You do. Uh, you do podcasts. Uh, I do. Yeah. How many? How many shows do you have? Well, I have a main podcast off of the radio station, and it is it's about uh, mental health because my now co-host is also who I've known forever and went to high school with my wife. Once again, the uh, connection is a separation, and we had worked at radio stations together and didn't realize that until I started dating my wife. We're like, oh my God, we all knew each other. Uh, she's actually a licensed mental health therapist. So given everything that I've had experience wise with that, we do a podcast called Coping on the Couch with Courtney and Brian. And what we do is we take a topic every week. And for people who are intimidated about the therapy experience, we take that topic and we say how I look at it and approach it as a patient and how she handles it from the other side, just to kind of take some of the stigma away and, and show what the process is like and how it's done. And it is serious to some degree, but you know, we also try to make it fun too. So that's the main one that I have going on now. I've, I've had others in the past in addition to doing the morning show and I appear on a ton of them. I'm just, I, I get asked to do these a lot and I'm, you guys asked me to do this as well, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's something that that wasn't around years and years ago. But it's also yet another way for somebody who wants to do something like this to kind of stick the toe in the water and see: Do I have a knack for it? How much do I like it? And do I know how to interest an audience? Right. And, uh, if you work hard enough, who knows? What's the uh, what's the name of the uh, the show that you coping on the couch coping with Courtney and Brian? And how yeah. do people get it? You can find it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. If you Google it, it comes up. Um, it's on a, a website called Libsyn. That's kind of where I, I put it through, and we promote it all over our socials too. Mm. Sounds great. I guess I'll uh, check that out there with it. And, uh, we yeah, we're coming it. up on episode 50 this week. So. Wow. Congratulations. And it's really close to you, the, uh, the podcast, I could tell. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, we it's, love doing it. It's a, it's a passion. I mean, all of this stuff is a passion, and, and that's the thing. You, you try to find that thing that you love because – you do it ideally for a very long time, so you better like what you're doing. You know? Right, mm. right. Well, people ask us, like, you know, what is the key to your success? You know, how do you guys do it? And uh, it really is, like you said, just do the work, mm -hmm. um, do what's right, and you just got to be persistent as all heck and just mm -hmm. never give up. And the thing is, too, uh, my brother has this saying, um, other people ruin everything. And... <laughs> Is, what does Kevin do? Does he, is, Kevin he on the, actually, is he on he, the radio? He, wor he works at the rock station on yeah. the morning show. Right, yeah. He is literally feet away from me every day. And I mean, we oh, I didn't know you guys were in the same building. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. And we work together as, as a writing team. And he has been on radio shows with me in the past. And that's an How'd interesting that minefield working with your brother. I'll tell you what. When we were in Los Angeles, we had a one-bedroom apartment that was very expensive. 
And we worked in an office that I would say was approximately this size. So we were this close to each other 24 hours a day. And the listeners don't know how big this office really is that we're in right now. Right. And right. we have a basketball court uh, on the <laughs> left side of this court. Here. We're gonna, yeah, we're yep. going to take a swim. We're going to take yep. a dip when we're done here. <laughs> I can't wait. Is it about 10 by 12, <laughs> I think, yeah. if we're lucky? <laughs> but, but, you know, to spend that much time with your brother and to try to do something creative and you can butt heads a lot of times with that we had to come up with a system where if things started to escalate one of us would say hey come on we're being jerks knock it off and that seemed to work but i said to him i said if one time one guy's like no i said one or both of us would end up dead because we, <laughs> this has been building for uh, for decades i, don't know, I worked with you guys you guys worked out pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> nobody i've seen some bad things we're not siblings but we're a spouse we've been working together since the beginning. I'm sure that must have its challenges, too, it I does. would imagine. Oh, yeah. It does. Yeah, yeah. we had to make rules. It took us about 15 years to make rules <laughs> about, like, not talking about work when you go home. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a big... So that's when you stop bringing thing. it to, to different places where it starts to get old. Business is it's fun and it's other things, but I, I like that you said that, Brian, because I agree with you. Uh, you seem to have fun with what you do. Oh, yeah. And that those are the times that... I think a bigger vision of what you're doing um, that's helped cast us now. I mean, 18 years in business is a, a long time right. that I remember when I first got in, I was like, man, I don't know what's going to be like in five years, wow. 10 years. Now you're like, Oh my, almost like 20 years, but you got to have something that carries you through those love lulls in there. I'm sure you have, and everybody else has in the world and to be able to sit there and say, Hey, uh, this ain't fun, but mm -hmm. you know, there's something bigger. Uh, the reason we do that. Well, I think one of the more interesting questions that I get, they say, what is the hardest part of your job? And what I say is the days that I go in there that I don't want to be there because, look, I'm a human being. I have stuff going on in my life. life. You know, I, right. I go through uh, family getting sick or, you know, just any kind of struggle that you can possibly imagine. And I'm still under that mic microscope every day. And some people can kind of mope at their desk, but I've got hundreds of thousands of people <laughs> tuning in. Every person in management can hear what I'm doing. So you kind of got to bring the A-game. And I would say that your job is similar mm -hmm. because you're dealing with the public. And there's got to be days, too, where you don't feel like doing this, that, or the other thing. But in some ways, you're you're also putting on a show <laughs> for these people. And you, you just have to find a way, and especially, too, for me, like, not only if I'm going through a hard time do I have to be up, but I also have to get up at 4 and drag myself out of that bed. Right. And, you know, get in there at 5 in the morning and still somehow try to find... You're up at what, 3 a.m.? What's that? What time do you get up at? Uh, it varies depending on what my responsibilities are. I would say on average a little after 4 in the morning. Oh, not bad. Get up, yeah. oh, we get up yeah. at the same time. Oh, okay. Yeah. What are you doing up at 4? I got to go to the gym, so it just oh, takes geez. a long time for me to get up. It's you like, can see that's not the case yeah. here. So. <laughs> it's like a cold engine. You got to get stopped. Yeah, there. yeah. And the older you get... The earlier you're going to have to get up. When I say 4 a.m., the yeah. alarm goes off at okay. 4. Okay. And then I nudge him. <laughs> yeah, so <it's> several <laughs> nudges, and then uh, eventually. Are, we, are, are you a snooze guy? Oh, huge snooze guy. <laughs> <laughs> How many times? I'm going to ask you, Jamie, because I know he's not going to be honest. Um, Like once or twice, but then sometimes he'll fall asleep. And then it I feels usually fall asleep. It feels more than but once or twice. I think she's being nice. Yeah. I think tw today was at least three or four. <laughs> I, it's like in my head, it's like it's almost I can hear it before it even goes off. So I'm a, like right at that moment, I'm, I'm nudging. All right. Tell me the truth in the pool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Just watch out for the bath. Don't get any water on the basketball court. I'll try. Yeah. One of the things I never did, I put a... Um, I put a song on to wake up with, but the problem is you hate that song. Oh, you start yeah. to. Yeah, oh, totally. Like, I'm, I'm a big Van Halen fan. Yeah. I have Van Halen on my phone. Yeah. And uh, yeah, sometimes it's like, I don't know if I like that one anymore. Yeah. yeah. No, I did the, the ACDC one and then it's Highway to Hell. And then I was like, I hate I'll this song. <laughs> and, and speaking of that too, the music that you listen to while you're working out, you're like, man, I'm starting to hate this now too. Oh yeah. I did the same thing for a while. <laughs> yeah. Even, but for me too, I'll be like selfish and I'll just say, can you just not use that song? Cause I really like it and I don't want to like hate it's guts. <laughs> yeah. So, cause he gets up earlier before me. But. Well, Brian, you've been a, a great uh, addition to our podcast. It's a lot of fun. Thanks I, for having I, me. I appreciate yeah. you coming on here and I could tell that you're a professional that you do this all the time because you just <laughs> kept this going. I gotta say, you two are pretty good at this. Yep. I'm uh, a little nervous. <laughs> if, if <laughs> management sees this, I don't know. I don't know what had happened. <laughs> uh, Nathan and Jamie in the morning. 
crazier things. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, if there's anything we ever do for you, uh, we're always here for you. We appreciate it. Same the- here, as always, my friends. Great yeah. to see you. Thank you. Thanks Good luck with the podcast, too. Thank, Thank you. you, yes. Just don't uh, get more downloads than a coping on the couch with Courtney. And, Bill, <laughs> and we might have a problem. Yes, check that out. Um, you know, we had Spotify. And where else was it on? Apple Podcasts. And then don't forget Cat Country 98.1, Monday through Friday. Yeah. That'd be 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Brian and Courtney in the morning, Cat Country mornings. Great show. Love the show. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I appreciate you lying. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Have a great day.